Okay, next question here. You have said in the Intel screwed up Rocket Lake 11th gen a launch discussion video that Intel could have just not released an i9 this generation, keeping the 10900K as the i9 option. It's easy to say in hindsight, but how do you think the tech press you included would have reacted to that announcement from Intel? Well, I think there's a bit more that you have to add on to this question for, th for that to be the case, because what Intel would have had to have done, which we were sort of saying they should have done in instead, is either pick pick an excuse like delayed 11th gen till later in the year or early next year, whenever it may be for when Elder Lake's coming due to whatever reasons, su supply or the current market conditions or whatever it may be. And instead of announcing a new 11th gen series that we think is a flop, uh, make an official announcement of the 10th gen price cuts. Yep. That would have been like, I honestly think the way the market is right now, how difficult it is for people to get PC components at a reasonable price, given all of those things, you know, AMD becoming Intel and offering, you know, only their X parts at these premium prices, like a six core part for $300 US, in a time when their competitors doing that, for them to step in and say, these discounted prices are now official and will be in effect till, you know, at least the end of the year or indefinitely. And then, you know, later in the year or early next year, we'll have our next generation part. I reckon that would have gone over super well. People would have re-evaluated and re-reviewed the existing components with those new prices. And yeah, they would have been go-to parts for many reviewers such as ourselves. So I think that would have played off better. Yeah, there would have been some disappointment they're not getting a new, we're not getting new CPUs, but I think getting those CPUs at the, at the current discounted prices. And they did some, I mean, they didn't do exactly this, but I remember back in the Broadwell era with like fifth generation, we didn't get much of that, that launch on desktop. They basically went from fourth to sixth gen stuff. Yeah, that's right. So they could have done something very similar here where you just go from 10 to 12th. The other option would have been like refreshing the 10900K as an 11900K, but make it basically the same instead of going backwards on core count, which I don't know whether that would have worked. But yeah, I guess if they had stuck with the 10900K done exactly what this question says. All the other 11th gen parts as is, except the 10900K was the i9 option instead. Would that have been received negatively by the press? And I think it that really comes down to how you how Intel phrases what they were doing and how they describe what they were doing to people. Like if mm. they had said, if they had said, we're releasing the 10900K. Um, and we're not giving you any explanation as to why there's no 11th gen part, then of course that is going to be negatively received. But I think people would have been more reasonable if they said, we have die size limits with 11th gen parts. We're using the same socket, so we can't make the CPU any larger. We're at an, a limit. We could only make up to eight cores with the 11th gen, but we still understand that our 10th gen processor is really strong in the areas that it's strong in. Having 10 cores makes it very strong for productivity. I mean, that might not be true compared to AMD, but they're marketing here, right? So if they had phrased it in that way, I think it would have been received better. It, all it requires is an explanation because there is a legitimate explanation. Mm -hmm. And I, I find it disappointing when companies try and hide that and sort of get around it by saying, oh, no, no, yeah, we, we had to use eight cores because you know, we're more concerned about single thread performance. Like, that's not the reason. Yeah. The reason is because you couldn't put 10 cores in the die. So just say that and let let what happens play out. Yeah, I refuse to believe for a second that Intel officially announcing price cuts for parts, well, across the board, so parts like the 10900K, would have gone over anywhere near as bad as what the 1100K did. Yeah. Like the 1100K was just like the worst release. Yeah, and I, c I can understand, like I've, uh, one of the videos I watched recently was from Ian over at Anantec where he mm -hmm. described how Intel could have succeeded with the 11th gen launch despite most people criticizing it mm -hmm. based on, you know, they've now learnt what is necessary to backport an architecture. They've learnt what are the limitations because they've actually taken this product the whole way to market. So they've learned everything they need to learn about backporting. But I still think that in some ways they could have learned all of those lessons and then just cancel the product yeah, at the I very don't, end. Don't just see why not. You do all the work. you've Because they've already done all the research and development. And they've already was, spent all that money. That's sort of my thought so as well. So at the end, if they just go right at the end, they go, well, we did all that. We've learned our lessons. It's not good enough for the market. So we're not making it. And we'll just discount our 10th gen parts, which again, as we've talked about, are likely to be significant. 
not significantly, but cheaper to manufacture. I, I think that'd be the way to go, and especially with the the battle. The bat- AMD is not going away. Yeah. Like they're getting stronger mm-hmm. and stronger, and AMD taking sorry Intel taking a hit to their reputation, their brand image with what they did with the eleventh gen. Again, with what you're saying, I, I feel it was unnecessary. I feel like if yeah. they had have just said, you know, it's still coming, we've got big things in the works, but have our current gen parts at an official price cut. So we're, you know, mm. they would have come off like the good guys. The, the issue that Intel had was that they didn't have the option to do this, to cancel the 11th gen series, because they teased the 11th gen yeah. series before Ryzen 5000. Like, yeah, way last year. <laughs> so because, by doing that and yeah. trying to get ahead of AMD's announcements, they didn't leave them any room to respond to AMD's announcements. Because if they had never teased it, then they could have actually seen Ryzen 5000 performance, yeah, they- which may have been better than they were expecting, and gone, oh... We're not going to be competitive for this 10th gen refresh is what we need to do or 10th gen price cuts. So Yeah, they're paying themselves into a corner. Yeah, on by one. teasing it six months ahead, they they kind of like, well, I guess we've got to release it now. We've got to release eleven nine hundred K because we talked about it like I still way think, too early. I still think even just pretending that never happened and or, you know, coming up with a legitimate reason as to why it's not gonna happen now, I still think that would have been would have gone over better. But anyway. Yes, possibly. But again, it's kind of yeah. They've done what they've done. They've yeah. got to. They've got to sit in it now and wait for twelfth gen. 